Hi, I'm Jenny Jacobs. In today's session, we're gonna talk about going from subject matter expert or SME to course creator. At this point, I'm hoping that you have an outline together and you're really diving into the details of creating a lesson. So we're gonna talk about that today. So the problem is that you don't know how to turn this content that you have, this outline that you have, into a lesson that students can take. I'm gonna give you five tips for developing lessons. These five hot principles that I'm gonna talk about today are best practices in the instructional design industry. So instructional design just means that we're helping content creators, professors, teachers, we're just helping them take their content and design it into instruction that works for their students. The first hot tip I have for you is to focus on the learner. The learner needs to be at the heart of everything that we're doing. They need to be at the top of our list and in the center of everything that we're trying to do. And there are some really specific ways that you can focus on your learner. One of the big things with a lot of courses out there is trying to get students to have enough motivation to finish the course. Most of the time, course completion rates are not great in online courses, but there are some specific things that you can do that really focus on the learner to increase motivation. Ryan and DC did a lot of work around motivation in educational settings. They found three specific attributes that lead to educational motivation, autonomy, relatedness, and competence. Autonomy means feeling independent, being able to make your own choices and choose your own adventure. There are a lot of ways that we can accomplish this in a course. We can accomplish this by letting students make choices in the course. Which parts do they want to learn first? Giving them scenarios where maybe there are four content topics that they want to pursue, but they get to choose the order in which they want to pursue them. They can choose to skip ahead or go back or repeat content. So they're in charge of their own learning. We're making them more independent and letting them take control of their learning. The second principle is relatedness. And this means building a relationship with your learner. This is hard to do in an online setting when everything is asynchronous and we're not actually getting the chance to interact with our learner, but there are some tricks you can do. One, make a video, let them see your face. When I first started doing online courses, I thought no one wants to see me talk. So I just had everything be a, a slide with my voice over it. And while that does make it a little more personable because they're hearing from you, what I found in my feedback is that participants actually wanted to see me. And when they watch my videos, they say things like, wow, I felt like you were talking right to me when you said that. They wanna see you looking at them. They wanna know that you are interested in them. So not all of your content has to be video, but you wanna put enough video in there that they feel like they're making a connection to you. You can also, Make sure that you introduce yourself to them. Tell them a little bit about yourself so they get to know who you are and you're not just this strange, you know, unknown person out there trying to teach some content to them. So tell them about yourself. The other way that you can develop relatedness is to do some interactive kinds of activities where they're getting feedback from you. You can do this from quizzes. Right? They can have, they choose their answer and then you give them very specific feedback about why their answer was correct or incorrect. And this can all be done asynchronously. Sometimes I will do an activity on a video. I give them the activity and I have them go do it and write down all their answers. And then I come back in a video and I give them the answers. I give them the video feedback and let them analyze where they went down the wrong path or the right path. So that's another way that you can really promote relatedness within your course. Tons of other ways too. And the third principle they found for educational motivation is competence. Making students feel competent and capable of learning the material. And that means that we have to start with what they already know. We have to make sure that we're taking their experiences into account as we're teaching the material. And that can be really tricky because you don't always know where your users are starting. You don't get to ask them questions ahead of time so that you're starting at exactly the right point. But there are things that you can do in an online course. 
One of the things you can do is allow them free movement within your course. If they already know a certain content area or they think they know a certain content area, let them skip it and move forward. Now, I know sometimes that's not possible with certain regulating systems, but to the extent that we can do that, we wanna honor the knowledge that they're bringing to the table. We also want to give them opportunities along the way to check their knowledge. And that's what I like to call it. Rather than a quiz or an assessment, I like to call it a check your knowledge opportunity. Did you get it? How did you do? What did, what did you not understand? What are you still missing? Um, so give them those opportunities to feel confident in their learning. Surprisingly, when I look at the data for my courses, one of the things that students like best about my courses is the check your knowledge quizzes. They like knowing that the information they focused on and learned was the most important information in the class and that they actually got it on the quiz. And they like having those check your knowledge points all along the way so that they're checking their knowledge as they go. And I like to let students take those quizzes as many times as they want. They can get whatever score they want. I'm one of those people that if I'm taking a course, I want 100 on every quiz, and I'll keep taking it until I get that 100. Even if I'm guessing and checking, what my research shows from my dissertation is that even guessing and checking reinforces content. And if your quiz questions, your check your knowledge questions, or your activities are based on the most important principles of the course, then as students are going through and taking things over and over again, they are reinforcing the most important concepts that you're trying to get across from them. So help them build their competence and their confidence. And then the last tip for really focusing on the user is to teach it from their perspective. You are a content knowledge expert. You know all of it, but they're just beginning. You want to teach your content in a way that makes sense for every learner so that when they're just starting out, they see your content and they're understanding it. You're breaking it down into the small pieces so that they can comprehend and build their learning as they go. My second hot tip for you is to build your lessons in micro units. Micro learning is the big buzzword right now and the reason it's a big buzzword is because it works. Micro units are small units, usually five to 15 minutes in length, but don't focus so much on the length of time. They're units that are in and of themselves a whole. So you could literally pluck this particular unit out of your content and it could stand alone and teaching something very small and, and minute. You see an example from one of my classes on some micro units that I have. I have a class around um, creating the neural pathways that are required for literacy. In one of the units for that class, we talk about three very specific topics. We talk about what the brain processes are during reading, then we talk about a specific area of the brain that's specialized in recognizing letters and connecting them to sounds called the letterbox region. And then we talk about how to activate that region and crack the code for literacy. They're very succinct units. Each one is between five and 15 minutes long, but they can stand alone. And when somebody has a question, I can literally pluck one of those out and send them to the person to answer their question. But given as a whole, they're meeting an objective of understanding or being able to describe how the neural pathways for reading are developed. So chunk your material into these smaller sections. You want to have the least amount of material possible to meet your objective. That's your goal. Not to cram everything you know into it, but the least amount of material possible. My next hot tip, tip number three, is to use a variety of modalities. We know from research that when you repeat content in different modalities, it sticks better to the brain. So use video, use PDFs, use reading within the course, use audio podcasts, use games and adventures, choose lots of different modalities. Now, you don't have to have every single thing in your course in every modality. You'd never publish your course if you tried to do that. But the really big things People want to be able to hear it and read it and take it with them. So make sure that you're providing that content. My fourth hot tip for developing lessons is to make it interactive. When you make your course interactive, you're engaging your learner. Interactivity can come in a lot of different formats. It might be clicking through 
eat to the next part of the lesson. It could be using drop down menus. Elementor has great drop down menus and tabs where you actually have to click on it to see the next section. Well, that might not sound very important. What that does is it makes the learner engage in some way into the content. It pulls them back into it. You've probably been reading a book at some point and you get to the bottom of the page and you think, I don't even know what I just read. Like, Somehow I spaced out during the middle of this. And so that's what this type of interactivity does. It pulls them back in and it gets them re-engaged. So that's one way of making it interactive. Another way of making it interactive is using simulations and hotspots to try to teach them how to do something. So if you're trying to teach someone how to play Mary Had a Little Lamb on the saxophone, I could have a picture of a saxophone and some hotspots where I'm creating hot spots for whether it's right or wrong, okay? Um, just silly little example, but you can make some interactive games. Use interactive features that are available to you. You can find a lot of those online. There are some great interactive web things that you can do. You can use Storyline or Rise to do some more sophisticated kinds of things where you can drag and drop definitions and matching and things like that. Um, quizzes, any kind of activity. I really like using my Forms app and being able to create a form that students complete. They ask them some reflection questions and ask them to plan some things. I'm in education, so planning is a big thing. And then that form gets emailed back to them so that they can keep it for their records and have a record of what they answered and um, watch their growth happen. So make your course as interactive as you can. And then my fifth hot tip is make it easy. Make it easy to navigate, easy to use, and easy to learn. Sometimes we get so caught up in all the bells and whistles that we forget that the simplest things are best. Your learner doesn't need a lot of distractions. They just need to focus in on your course. So make it easy for them to do that. Make your, your navigation streamlined. Make it dummy proof that anybody can log in and figure out how to do it. When I first started using Lifter LMS, I used it straight out of the box. I had no extra bells and whistles. And one of the comments that I got over and over again was how easy it was to navigate because I didn't have a lot of other stuff in there. So make it easy to navigate. Make it easy to engage. Build in those engagement opportunities at key sections of your course. Ask them to reflect on content. Give them check your knowledge quizzes. Let them choose their own adventures. Give them feedback on their answers that they give in the course um, in asynchronous ways. Make it easy to stay engaged in the course and be excited about your content. That's one of the easiest ways to keep people engaged. If you're excited, they become excited. If they can feel your passion, hear the passion in your voice, they start getting excited about being able to do this themselves. So make it easy for them to engage. Make it easy for them to interact with you. Let them know how to get in touch with you. Make it easy for them to submit their answers. Don't make them go to 15 different places in order to do something. Streamline everything and make the process as easy as you can for them. And then make it easy to learn. Now, when I say make it easy to learn, that doesn't mean dumbing down the content. You don't have to dumb down your content. You can teach some extremely complicated things by breaking it down and making it easy for them. I teach some really specific kinds of things in terms of literacy and math development for young children with a lot of technical vocabulary, but I break it down so that it's easy for teachers to learn. So make it easy for people to learn. Don't leave them confused. If you're using a big word, explain it. Right? Give them everything they need and make it easy for them. So here's my system for developing your lesson content. Keep your learner at the focus. Make sure that you're giving them opportunities to create autonomy, be independent, that you're giving them opportunities to feel competent and have confidence in their learning ability, and that you're building a relationship with them. And most importantly, teach it from their perspective. Second, use micro units or micro learning to chunk your content. So once you've gotten the chunks of all your big topics, break those down into further units so that you're teaching one concept at a time and you can pull it out as its own entity. How long do your micro units need to be? 
as long as it takes. If you're finding that your micro unit is 20 or 30 minutes, then you probably need to break it down into even smaller chunks, right? If you've got a five step process, then maybe each one of those steps needs to be its own micro unit. Use micro learning. Third, make it interactive. Engage your learner and help them stay engaged in the course through the activities and through the technical aspects of how you design your course. Fourth, use a variety of modalities. The right modality is the one that makes the most sense for the content that you have. Don't worry about whether your people are visual learners or kinesthetic learners, right? Learning styles are a myth. Teach it in the way that makes the most sense for your user and choose a variety of ways to present that same content. So do it in video and then give them a handout that reinforces it. And then last, make it easy and make it fun. Make it easy to navigate, easy to learn, easy to interact, easy to use. Those are my five hot tips for you. I'm Jenny Jacobs. Happy course creating.